a lot of you are worried about Dunbar. We've got to keep a big pasture between the two in order for things to go well. Now is not the time for Dunbar to be hurt. Just like your mama. You act just like her too. Hey guys, Dusty Becker across Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back to our channel. Hanging out with our year 22 yearlings right here. They're doing great. We've got them. This is the group that I separated a couple weeks ago when I let the big Joe herd up here. But I know a lot of you aren't worried about these guys. A lot of you are worried about Dunbar. Well, first thing we're gonna do, is we're gonna go check him and tell you about Dunbar's progress and how he's doing since uh, him and Big Joe have been in the pasture together for the first time. Luckily, with a lot of patience, <laughs> Marissa and I were able to get the Dunbar herd safely separated out of the Big Joe herd. Um, got all of them separated, and the most important part is we got Dunbar away from Big Joe in the middle of breeding season. So uh, now that they've been separated, they've been settling down. We've been watching Dunbar's recovery from some of his injuries um, of being in the same pasture with Big Joe and then battling it out. So, And then what we're doing next, we are hustling on this fence to get it done because we've got to keep a big pasture between the two in order for things to go well and make it safe uh, so we don't run into any more issues with Dunbar and Big Joe. If you're wondering how Dunbar's doing, he's doing so much better. There's a lot of good positive signs of Dunbar recovering very well from his time with Big Joe. This is something you don't want to go through when you have two mature breed bulls. There's so many things that could go wrong, especially during a very important time of breeding season. The chances of all your breedable females to be bred during this time with one bull down can really mess up your program. In this case, we were very lucky with the injuries that Dunbar took. In the wild and in some private herds, some bulls don't make it. In some worst case scenarios, like in big national parks like Yellowstone, some bulls battle it to the end. The chances this time of the year where two breed bulls get into it, more than likely, one bull is going to be seriously injured. Could be damages to the eye, goring, and in the worst case, death. We're very fortunate that Dunbar did not take on any more serious injuries than what he already had. Now that he's back with his females, him and Haas can have their scuffles. But at the end of the day, Dunbar seems to be himself again, curious for cubes and back to chasing ladies. One of the first things we did is last winter we cleared this 100 yard stretch on the back side of my aunt and uncle's property which combines with our hay meadow. This fence line was covered in hackberries and cedar trees. Once we removed the stumps we had to level out the ground and now it was ready for new fence. Next thing I do is get your post set. So we had our neighbor Richard drive all of our posts. When you're driving your posts you can almost drive them four to five feet in the ground. Once the posts were set, Kevin and I welded up the H braces. We used 2 and 3 8 pipe for our crossbar. Welded some 4x4 panels up here. We're going to put a 12 foot gate right here. Another 4x4 panel on our H brace. We're going to stretch this right here. It's probably only Golly, 150 feet, not very long, but that's the view right there. Now that the H braces are set and ready to go, we go ahead and stretch one strand of barbed wire very tightly from post to post. This gives you a straight line and now you can start marking where your T-post will go. In this case, we are putting our T-post 10 foot apart in this stretch of fence. And so Ryder, my little cousin, helped me mark every 10 feet. 
where we were going to drive our T-post. You got him? Yeah. We just need one more. Just one. I mean, you, can try, you can take it. Then with the help of my Uncle Keith, which is Kevin's brother, using the bucket, my Uncle Keith came in and helped drive the T-post in his new John Deere tractor. Yeah. There's a... We took a break from building the new fence and we had to go repair a boundary fence that I shared with one of my neighbors to the south. This cross fence was only five strands of wire, so we went in and reinforced with taller T-posts and made sure that each strand was tight and clipped on to each T-post. Since Kevin and Keith went ahead and built the fence and stretched all the wire, all there was left was to hang a gate and this fence would be done. The only thing left to do was haul some freestanding panels over to this hay meadow and a water tank. here babe we've got three freestanding panels and then we've got a water tank we are hustling to get these bison out on the hay meta fence is done all the work's been put in we've repaired fence we've built new fence and uh, we're using these freestanding panels to cut off the lane and uh, hopefully it works but um, basically, we all the good fencing is going to be blocked off, and and uh, the bad fencing the bison won't have access to because that's going to be more work later. But uh, we've done we've done all the work for this uh, specific pasture to have it ready, so it's ready. Once we put these freestanding panels up, and then we're going to use this big water tank because we don't have water in this pasture. It's the only pasture that doesn't have water in it. And uh, luckily, my aunt and uncle is uh, gonna get us, let us use their roll water, which is gonna be awesome. For now, we're working on getting a well drilled, and if we do hit water in this pasture, we'll have water, but for now, luckily our aunt and uncle is gonna uh, be gracious enough to let us use some of their water, so. Um, gotta have it hot and dry right now, so. This is the last piece of puzzle, and then we might some bust out. Got it. Uh -huh. I was gonna say I'd put it up next to that pipe. Uh -huh. Yeah. Honestly, it needs to be covered. So they don't get in it? Yeah, so they don't get in it. Because they'll be bathing in it as soon as they can. 
quick. So now, here's the new fence, it's all ready to go. We've uh, still got a little bit more to do that way, but that doesn't matter. So this is my aunt and uncle's house. And uh, so luckily our land just butts up to them, a piece of it does, which is super convenient, but they've got the best view out of anyone at the Pondero. So they've got this. So uh, minus a little burn pile, brush pile, this was covered in trees, covered in trees. We removed them, stacked them here, got away from us, we couldn't burn, um, got dry and too fast, but we love this hay meadow because we got Dunbar and Big Joe over here. We need some pastures between them. Uh, and we've got grass right here, beautiful, lots of native grass here. We thought, well, let's hustle. Let's get this finished. And with Keith, my uncle Keith, and Kevin's help, um, and some other people that have helped on this whole project and um, getting this thing done, we hustled on it really fast and got it done. But uh, so we can let them out here. So water tank, three panels to cut a lane off. And then Marissa and I are gonna go out in the pasture and we're gonna go get Dunbar hoss herd, all the females, and let them in here. Plenty of grass to graze, and it gives quite a few acres and a big pasture, two pastures really, but at least we'll, there'll be one pasture between Dunbar and Big Joe, so we have no more shenanigans, hopefully. But it'll be very pretty to see them over here on this hill. Sunsets over here, aunt and uncle are gonna have the best of you. So, but that's part of the beauty of it. It's, brings lots of people together. We got cousin Tyler, another Oklahoma State grad to help us out today. He's down visiting. He actually still, he works for Oklahoma State. We got water. We got some water. Guys, we're so blessed and lucky because if our aunt and uncle uh, wasn't right back here behind us, we wouldn't have water and we wouldn't be able to do this. Um, so very thankful for them to supply us with some of their own real water. Um, we Marissa warned them and said, uh, you know, whatever your normal water account bill is and you get the new bill <laughs> tell us the difference so uh we can pay you to fill this big boy up here i'm not sure what size this is we calculated it up last year we used this tank last year during the drought and all the ponds got really low yeah, but they got to have water hopefully the uh 
water well company will be out at some point and we'll be able to have wells drilled. Maya! What are you doing, Maya? I know you want in there. One of the only downfalls of using these waters is they're gonna get in it. Unfortunately, I'm not sure the best way. You guys let me know if you have any good ideas to keep the top of this covered because, you know, it's so hot right now. We're in the high 90s, getting creeping into 100 every now and then. I'm not sure what's gonna keep them out. They're gonna wanna get in there. Um, but you gotta have something this big when you got 26, 27, 28 animals in a herd. You've gotta have something large enough to, uh, to support them and, and so they have water um, daily and so we'll be checking this my aunt and uncle will be checking this I'm sure making sure that they have water and whatnot so um, which we appreciate that go get it bring that stick here Thank you guys for watching us. Hope you can join us on the next video when we release the Dunbar and Haas herd into a pasture where there's never been bison before. Thank you guys. Hey little Nora, 250.